Hello everyone, my name is Javi Zephyr and welcome to First Aid Explain, where I, as a medical student, try my best to explain every page of the First Aid USMLE Step 1 2021 textbook. In this video, I'll be covering the biochemistry portion, pages 89 to 94. So let's begin. Now here on the first page, we have fatty acid metabolism. Now fatty acid synthesis requires transport of citrate from mitochondria to the cytosol. Predominantly occurs in the liver, lactating membrane glands, and adipose tissue. And in this diagram, it's depicting how the citrate is released from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm where fatty acid synthesis occurs. Now, long-chain fatty acids, or LCFA degradation, requires carotene-dependent transport into the mitochondrial matrix. So you can see here that the fatty acid degradation enters the mitochondrial matrix through the carotene shuttle, where it's broken down and degraded. To remember that citrate is a substrate used for fatty acid synthesis, cystrate, S-Y-T-R-A-T, -T, is synthesis, synthesis. Now, carotenine is for the carnage of fatty acids, or the degradation of it. Now, in primary systemic carotene deficiency, there's no cellular uptake of carotene. That means there's no transport of LCFAs into the mitochondria. This leads to toxic accumulation of LCFAs, or long-chain fatty acids, in the cytosol, causing weakness, hypotonia, hypoketotic, and hypoglycemia, and dilated myocardial myopathy. Now, medium-chain acyl-CoA dehydrogen deficiency this decreases the ability to break down fatty acids into acetyl-CoA, and this leads to accumulation of fatty acetyl carotenes in the blood with hypoketotic hypoglycemia. This causes vomiting, lethargy, seizures, coma, liver dysfunction, and hyperammonemia, and can lead to sudden death in infants or children. And the treatment is by avoiding fasting. Okay, next. Now here we have the ketone bodies which are in the liver, fatty acids and amino acids are metabolized to, aso, to acetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate, and this is used in the muscle and brain. Now, in prolonged starvation and diabetic ketoacidosis, oxyacetate is depleted for gluconeogenesis. With chronic alcohol overuse, excess NADH shunts oxyacetate to malate. All these processes leads to the buildup of acetyl-CoA, which is shunted into ketone body synthesis. This all also happens in keto diets, where an excess intake of fatty food with low intake of carbs and proteins. Now, the ketone bodies include acetone, acetone acetate, and beta hydroxybutyrate. And the breath smells like acetone, which is a fruity odor. Now, urine tests for ketones can detect acetone acetate, but not beta hydroxybutyrate. Now, RBCs cannot utilize ketones, and they strictly use glucose. Now, HM, HMG-CoA lies for ketone production, which is HMG reductase for cholesterol synthesis. All right, so here in this image, you can see how acetoacetate or ketone bodies are transported from the liver, blood, and hepat extrahepatic tissues, for example, the skeletal muscle. And you can see how acetone is released in, in the air through lungs. That's where you get the fruity order of acetone. Now, the, the difference between fasted and fed state of adipose tissue in the fasted and fed. Now, you can see here that in the fasted state of adipose tissue or adipocyte, triglycerides are converted to glycerol and, and and into free fatty acids. And the exact opposite happens with the help of glucose and insulin in the fed state, where glucose is stored into triglycerides. Okay, next we have metabolic fuel use. And this is a diagram depicting, a graph depicting how our body uses different fuel sources, for example, carbohydrates, and fatty acids and ketones. So you can see here that one, one gram of carb or protein is equal to four calories. 
Whereas one gram of alcohol is equal to seven calories, and one gram of fatty acid is equal to nine calories. Do you remember this, that the number of letters in carb, alcohol, fatty acids is equal to the number of calories. So four letters in the word carb is four calories. Alcohol has seven letters, so seven calories. Fatty acid has nine letters, so nine calories. Okay, now the fasting and starvation. Now the priorities are to supply sufficient glucose to the brain and RBCs and to preserve protein. Those are the main priorities. Now during the fed state, which is after a meal, glycolysis and aerobic respiration occur. And insulin stimulates storage of lipids, proteins, and glycogen. Now fasting, which is between meals, hepatic glyconeolysis, which is the major um, process, or hepatic gluconeogenesis, and adipose release free fatty acids. Now glucagon and epinephrine stimulate use of fuel reserves. Now starvation, which occurs between one and three days of not having any meals, now the blood glucose during the starvation period are maintained by hepatic glyconeo glycogenolysis, adipose release of free fatty acids, muscle and liver, which shift fuel use from glucose to free fatty acids, hepatic gluconeogenesis from peripheral tissue lactate and aniline, and from adipose tissue glycerol and propanol CoA are released. Now glycogen reserves are depleted after day one of the starvation phase. Now RBCs lack mitochondria and therefore cannot use ketones. All right, now starvation after day three, the adipose stores ketone bodies and become the main source of energy for the brain. After these are depleted, vital protein degradation accelerates, leading to organ failure and death. The amount of excess stores determines survival time. So if you have more adipose tissue, you have a more chance of surviving for a longer time. And here's a diagram or graph showing us the relation of stored energy of carbohydrates, fat, and protein to the weeks of starvation. Okay. Next we have lipid transport. Now, once we take our dietary fat and cholesterol, it's transported into the intestinal cell to the lumen, where the chylo micron enters the lymphatics. This is the chylo micron. Once it enters the thoracic duct into the suffocating cava, it goes on into the systemic circulation, where the HDL transfers the ApoC2 and ApoE, as you can see here. And then the chylo micron ApoC2 act activates LPL, which is right here, lipoprotein lipase. Now here in the liver, the liver then releases VLDL, and VLDL moves on, and this VLDL ApoC2 activates LPL. Now IDL delivers TGS, or tri triglycerides, and cholesterol to the liver via the ApoE chain. And then finally, the endocytosis of LDL occurs. All right, that was a very brief overview of lipid transport, but this is all important for you to remember at each stage or each step, for number three, four, and seven have possible impairment in different familial dyslipidemias. So for example, the third step, chylomicron ApoC2 activates LPL, is impaired in type 1 familial dys dyslipidemia. As the liver releases a VLDL in step 4, overproduction in the type 4 familial uh, dys dyslipidemia. And lastly, in the endocytosis of LDL, this can be impaired in type 2 familial dyslipidemia. Okay. Now the key enzymes in lipid transport are the cholesterol esterol ester ester transfer protein. This mediates the transfer of cholesterol esterol esters to other lipoprotein particles. The hepatic lipase, which degrades TGs, remaining in the IDL and chylomicron remnants. Hormone-sensitive lipase 
degrades TG stores in the adipocytes and promotes glyconeogenesis by release, releasing glycerol. Lectin cholesterol acetyltransferase catalyzes esterification of one of two thirds of plasma cholesterol that is required for HDL maturation. Lipoprotein lipase degrades CGs in circulating color microns. Pancreatic lipase degrades dietary TGs in the small intestine. Now, PCSK9 degrades LDL receptor, leading to increased serum LDL, and in inhibition leading to increased LDL receptor recycling, leading to decreased serum LDL. Now, the major apolipoproteins are E, A1, C2, B48, and B100. Now, apolipoprotein E mediates remnant uptake. So it helps in uptake of everything except LDL. So it's present in the color micron, color micron remnant, VLDL, IDL, and HDL, but not in LDL. Now, A1 apolipoprotein is found only on alpha lipoproteins, which is HDL and activates LCAP. So this is only present in HDL. Now C2 apolipoprotein is a lipoprotein, lipase, cofactor that catalyzes and cleaves, so which is found in the color micron, VLDL, IDL, and HDL. Now B48 mediates color micron secretion into lymphatics only on particles originating from the intestines. So this is only present in the color micron and color micron ribbons. Lastly, we have B100, and this binds LDL receptors only on particles originating from the liver. So that means it's only going to be found in the VLDL, IDL, and LDL. Okay, now we have lipoprotein functions. Now, lipoproteins are composed of varying proportions of cholesterol, triglycerides, and phospholipids. LDL and HDL carry the most cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is needed to maintain cell membrane integrity and synthesize bile acids, steroids, and vitamin D. Now, color micron delivers dietary TGs to the peripheral tissues, delivers cholesterol to the liver in the form of color micron remnants, which are the mostly depleted of their TGs, and secreted by intestinal epithelial cells. Now, VLDL delivers hepatic TGs to the peripheral tissue, and is secreted by the liver. Now, IDL delivers triglycerides and cholesterol to the liver, formed from degradation of VLDL. Now, LDL delivers hepatic cholesterol to the peripheral tissues, formed by hepatic lipase modification of IDL in the liver and peripheral tissue, and is taken up by target cells via receptor-mediated endocyte apoptosis. Now, LDL is lethal, because we all know the high levels of LDL or a sign of high cholesterol in the bloodstream. Now, HDL mediates reverse cholesterol transfer from the peripheral tissues to the liver and acts as a repository for apolipoprotein C and E, which are needed for the color marker and VLDL metabolism, and C is secreted from both liver and intestine and increases alcohol synthesis. So, HDL is healthy. Now, in a beta lipo proteinemia, which is an autosomal, autosomal recessive disease. Mutations occur in the gene that encodes microsomal transfer protein, MTP. Chyla macrons, VLDL, and LDL are absent. Deficiency are in ApoB48 and ApoB100. Now, affected infants present with severe fat malabsorption, steroteria, and failure to thrive. Later manifestations include retinitis, pigmentosa, spinal cerebellar degradation due to vitamin E deficiency, progressive ataxia, and acanthocytosis. Intestinal biopsy shows lipid-laden enterocytes, which are seen in this picture. Now, the treatment for a beta lipoproteinemia is restriction of long-chain fatty acids and large doses of oral vitamin E. Next, we have the four main types of familial dyslipidemias. Type 1 is hypercholomicronemia, and this is an autosomal recessive disease. And basically, there's a deficiency in lipoprotein lipase, or apoc 2 This leads to high levels 
of color microns, triglycerides, and cholesterol in the blood. And the clinical findings are the pancreatitis, hepatosplenomegaly, and eruptive or purine xanthomas. But there's no increased risk for atherosclerosis. Now, type 2 plant familial dyslipidemia, or hypocholesterolemia, is autosomal dominant and is absent or defective LDL receptors or defective in ApoB, A100. Now, in type 2A of hypercholesterolemia, LDL and cholesterol are high in the blood, whereas in type 2B, LDL, cholesterol, and VLDL are high, high in the blood. And the clinical findings are heterozygotes uh, have cholesterol roughly around 300 milligrams per deciliter. The homozygotes, which are very rare, have less than 700, sorry, greater than 700 milligrams of deciliter. Now, this exoidated atherosclerosis, which these patients may have an MI before even the age of 20. Now, there's xanthomas and corneal arcus can also occur. Now, in type 3, or dis beta lipoproteinemia, is an autosomal recessive inheritance with the pathogenesis being a defect in ApoE, where there's high levels of carmicrons and VLDL in the bloodstream. And the clinical findings are the premature atherosclerosis, tuberuptive and palmar xanthomas, and help to and help. And to remember this pie, you can use APEs, which are ApoE, and the palms, so apes palms. Now, type 4 familial dyslipidemia or hypertriglyceridemia is an autosomal dominant disorder where there's a hepatic overproduction of VLDL. So, there are high levels of VLDL as well as triglycerides in the bloodstream. And this leads to hypertriglyceridemia, which is more than 1,000 milligrams per deciliter, and can cause acute pancreatitis, and is related to insulin resistance. All right, that's it for biochemistry. This is the last page of this portion. Next, we'll be covering the immunology of the USMLE portion. Now, thank you so much for listening, and have a good day.